In the United States, a civil war has taken over the country. Texas and California have seceded and formed the WF or Western Forces Militia, while Florida has created its own alliance. A third-term president leads the government forces against the secessionist movements and he often appears on TV to make speeches, swearing victory is close thanks to the defense of the loyalist states. However nobody believes him and it's only a matter of time before Washington DC is reached by the WF. War photographer Lee watches the speech from her hotel room in New York and even takes a picture of the TV. Then she notices a bombing occurring in the middle of the city. The next day, Lee and her colleague journalist Joel take a car downtown to cover a protest in which desperate people are begging for water. They're given fluorescent vests before Lee mingles with the crowd to take some pictures. Things soon get violent as the police officers try to push the people back, only for the crowd to retaliate. This doesn't scare Lee who just keeps taking pictures, but a young photographer named Jesse gets struck in the chaos. Lee immediately drags Jesse away to safety and learns the girl is a fan of her work. As she gives Jesse her vest, she notices an armed woman running into the crowd with an American flag and pushes Jesse down for cover right before a bomb explodes, killing almost all the protesters. For several minutes Jesse can't hear anything and she has to deal with her shock, however Lee quickly comes out to take pictures of all the bodies. Jesse forces herself to take a picture too, not wanting to be seen as lesser. Later at a hotel where all journalists are staying, Lee and Joel discuss their options with their mentor Sammy while Lee tries to upload her pictures regardless of the slow Wi-Fi. There are rumors of a big attack on July 4th to make it historically relevant, but they aren't sure if believing it. At that moment the power goes out, which happens often since the war started and that's why the hotel has a generator ready. After some prodding, Sammy learns the duo will drive through the country's war zones to reach DC, but not to cover the front lines. They want the last interview with the president, who hasn't given an interview in 14 months. In fact journalists get shot if they approach the White House. Sammy thinks their plan is insane and even knows what the best route to reach DC is, so Lee guesses he wants to reach DC too. However Sammy wants to go to the front lines in Charlottesville, Virginia, and he needs a ride. At first Lee and Joel are worried because Sammy is too old to run, but in the end Lee agrees to bring him. Afterward Lee tries going to a room on the 10th floor and the receptionist reminds her that the power comes and goes, so using the elevator could be a risk. At that moment she's approached by Jesse, who has come to thank her and give her the vest back. Lee tells her to keep it and to get a helmet for the future. Jesse explains she's been a regular photographer so far and she's trying to become a war one, which is why Lee is her hero. Later in her room, Lee takes a bath to try to relax, but she's haunted by all the atrocities she's seen in the many wars she's covered. There's been disgusting amounts of death, destruction, and torture, and Lee took pictures of all of it while being unable to help those in need. The next morning the group gets ready to leave and Lee is shocked to see Jesse in the car. She has an argument with Joel, who calls out Lee's hypocrisy on many points, she's fine with Sammy who can't run, and all journalists start at that age, including Lee herself. With no arguments left, Lee agrees to bring Jesse but only if they drop her at Charlottesville with Sammy. The group takes off and when they leave the city, Sammy reminds Jesse to pay attention. The roads are full of abandoned or broken cars so they must drive around them. At a checkpoint, soldiers make sure to check their journalist IDs before letting them pass. During the trip, Sammy and Joel discuss what kind of questions Joel can make during the interview, like touching on the subjects of disbanding the FBI and using airstrikes against American citizens. Eventually they find a gas station guarded by three armed guys. They really need the fuel, so they risk stopping. At first the men don't want to share, but they quickly change their mind when Lee offers to pay extra and in Canadian currency. While they fill the tank, Jesse notices something in the distance and goes to check while one of the men follow her. Lee gets worried and follows them as well. To Jesse's disgust, she discovers two men hanged by their wrists after being severely tortured. The gunman explains they were looters and his group has been arguing over what to do with them for days, since they're still alive. He gives Jesse the power to choose, but she freezes. To distract the guy, Lee makes him pose with the looters and takes a few pictures. Later when the group is back on the road, Jesse complains that she didn't take a single photo and wonders if she should have helped. The others explain this is the journalist's life so she must get used to it because it'll get much worse later. Jesse can't help to cry but promises to be braver in the future. As the group continues to travel, they hear more empty speeches from the president on the radio and watch the destruction that surrounds them. There are bodies everywhere, but something else catches Lee's attention and she makes Joel stop the car. Then Lee takes Jesse to a fallen helicopter so she can take some interesting pictures. While doing so, Jesse apologies for being a burden and explains her old style camera used to belong to her dad. He's currently hiding in his farm pretending nothing is happening, which bothers her. Jesse wonders if Lee would photograph her if she ever got shot, but Lee lets her reach her own conclusions. In the evening, the group stops to rest. While watching gunfire in the distance, Lee comments on how she used to cover wars as a way to send home some warnings, yet now the violence is right there around the corner. Sammy realizes she's losing faith in the power of journalism and that's why she's being hard on Jesse. Meanwhile Joel tells Jesse it's normal if she's unable to sleep after what she saw and offers his comfort if she needs it. That night they sleep outside like campers. 
The next day they go to the area with the gunfire they saw last night. Lee and Jesse take tons of pictures as two groups continue to fire at each other with a guy stuck in the middle. A team throws out a smoke grenade to offer some cover, however as soon as the guy tries to run he gets shot and his bleeding gets captured on camera. His teammates drag him to safety and try their best to deal with his wound. Unfortunately the man won't stop bleeding and dies as Jesse takes photos of the whole process. Afterward the team enters the building and the journalists follow them. They find a bleeding man asking for help and he gets shot down. Jesse can't help staring as the team finishes searching the building. By the end, Joel is laughing with a fighter as if it was a normal work day. The soldiers capture a few enemies and takes them out for execution, which Jesse takes pictures of too. Sometime later, the journalists arrive at a refugee camp. All tents are full so they'll still have to sleep in their car. While Jesse develops her pictures the old way, she continues to bond with Lee, who explains her parents are also in a farm pretending nothing is going on. When Jesse finally takes a look at her pictures she's disappointed that they don't look good, but Lee reminds her this is normal, only one of every 30 photos will be worthy. Jesse eventually finds an excellent picture of the dying man and Lee compliments her work. That night the group is able to relax with other refugees before returning to the horrors in the morning. Their journey continues as the journalists watch the never-ending death and destruction by the roads. Jesse takes more pictures, putting the faces of her friends on the shots for extra impact. Eventually they reach a town that looks perfectly normal, with people hanging out on the streets and peace all around. They stop by a clothing store and ask the clerk what's going on, so the clerk explains her town has chosen to just ignore the war. Jesse convinces Lee to try on a dress, pointing out that being at war doesn't mean she can't have nice things. She teases her looks and takes a picture of Lee's smile because it's the first time she sees it. Afterward Lee goes back to Sammy, who points out there are armed men on the roofs. He also says this life wouldn't have suited them because it's boring. Sometime later, the group finds an abandoned circus with a dead man in the middle of the road. Lee checks the area with her camera zoom but doesn't see anyone. Joel decides to move forward but as soon as they cross the entrance arch, their window gets shot. Panicking, Joel speeds up and runs over the body until he finds a safe spot near a truck to stop. There they find two camouflaged soldiers, who are waiting for the shooter in the house to reveal themselves. As the journalists move around to cover this incident, the shooter fires at them and fails. Jesse and Lee take pictures while Joel tries interviewing the soldiers, wanting to know whose side they and the shooter are with. However the soldiers don't belong to any team, they're just two dudes trying to kill a person that wants to kill them in return. After some waiting, the soldiers finally bring down the shooter and the group can leave safely. Sometime later, the journalists notice a car is speeding to catch up to them. Fearing the worst, Lee slows down to let them pass. However the car drives by their side and a guy screams at them, giving them a scare. Thankfully it's just a prank and these guys are Tony and Bohai, fellow journalists and friends of Joel. It turns out that during their night at the hotel, Joel got drunk and told Tony where they're going. Tony also reveals Joel had hit on Jesse. He's so excited to see them that he climbs through the window and gets in the car with them, saying they're more fun. Jesse is impressed and tries the same trick, ending up in the other car. Bohai likes her better than Tony and speeds up to leave with Jesse. Lee is worried even though Tony says Bohai is trustworthy, and she gets even more nervous when they stop seeing the other car ahead of them. Suddenly a military car passes by and Lee has to go off the road to avoid crashing. Luckily she stops the vehicle right before they could hit a tree. They quickly return to the road and find Bohai's car abandoned by a farm with its doors open. The group goes to investigate and discovers Bohai and Jesse were captured by loyalist gunmen, who are keeping them on their knees while dropping bodies in a huge grave. Sammy points out these dudes aren't normal soldiers because they're clearly doing this in secret, but Joel thinks their press IDs can keep them safe everywhere. Lee, Joel, and Tony approach the gunmen and explain that Bohai and Jesse are part of their journalist group, swearing they're just going to Charlottesville to cover a story about a university opening again. Without hesitation, the head gunman shoots Bohai, leaving Jesse in shock and making Tony cry. The gunman asks them where they are from, so Lee, Joel, and Jesse mention their home states. However when Tony explains he's from Hong Kong, he gets shot as well. As everyone panics, Sammy shows up in the car and hits the soldiers with it, causing them to fall in the grave. Jesse accidentally falls as well and she has to climb on the huge pile of bodies to get out. Joel helps her and the group gets back in the car to drive away, ignoring the remaining gunman that tries to shoot them as they escape. On the road, Jesse and Joel have breakdowns, and Jesse even vomits. They barely travel a mile or two before Sammy announces he can't drive anymore and the group discovers he's been shot. They move him to the back seat and Joel takes over the wheel, driving as fast as possible through a burning forest. Eventually they reach the WF military base in Charlottesville, where they have a flag with only two stars. Unfortunately it's too late, Sammy is dead. As Joel yells at the wind, the soldiers take Sammy's body away in a box. Lee stares a picture she took of dead Sammy, only to delete it. Moments later, they learn from journalist friends that most of the loyalists have already surrendered, so DC is undefended except for a few remaining soldiers. The president's death is imminent, which means the group can't have their interview. 
Joel is incredibly annoyed because it means Sammy died for nothing. Lee and Jesse take a moment to grieve together and Jesse admits these past days she's felt the most afraid in her life, but also the most alive. Later while Lee is washing Sammy's blood off the car, the trio agrees to leave with the WF so they can cover their attack on the White House. Most of the loyalists may have surrendered but there are still enough of them to keep the fight on the streets. As the WF attacks the Lincoln Memorial, the journalists follow the soldiers through the area. Jesse is taking plenty of impactful pictures, but Lee freezes when she's hit by her PTSD. Joel makes her snap out of it when a tank and a helicopter clean the way on the streets, allowing them to keep moving. The soldiers go to different roofs to establish a line of defense and the journalists hide behind an armored car to follow the story. Suddenly an explosion causes the armored car to drive away, so the group has to run to hide. Jesse is slower because she keeps taking pictures, especially one of a man in flames. She also gets some great shots of a tank finally breaking the wall surrounding the White House. Lee is still struggling and even crying, so Joel has to keep her moving. Nearby, another journalist and her cameraman are recording the whole deal. At that moment they notice some Secret Service agents bringing the president out of the White House and putting him in a car. Three vehicles leave the area and as soon as they crash on the streets, the soldiers surround them to shoot every single person inside. Jesse takes more pictures, however Lee guesses this is a decoy and drags her friends into the White House to find the actual president. Some soldiers notice this and follow them. Inside the White House, they find a few bodies and not much else. The soldiers soon arrive and start a thorough search that takes them to find an agent surrendering in the conference room. A more alert Lee takes pictures with Jesse as the agent explains she wants to negotiate the president's surrender, asking for him to be taken to a neutral country. However the soldiers just shoot her and keep going deeper into the White House. More secret agents open fire on the corridors and the journalists do their best to keep taking photos of every death. They run through multiple rooms, shooting one loyalist after the other with no mercy. When they reach an area at the back, Jesse takes a risk by standing in the middle of the hallway for a picture and Lee jumps in front of her because the enemy is about to open fire. Jesse falls to the ground and doesn't hesitate to take pictures of Lee getting shot to death right in front of her. Afterward Jesse is left in a state of shock for a few seconds until Joel asks her to come along to the Oval Office. The soldiers have surrounded the president but before they can shoot, Joel asks them to wait because he needs a quote. The president says don't let them kill me and Joel decides that will do. Now the soldiers finally shoot the president down, winning the war. Jesse's final picture is the soldiers posing next to the body as if it was a hunting shot. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.